Another day, another million dollars spent on weapons to be used against Americans. This time, the Department of Homeland Security signals its intent to spend half a million dollars purchasing pepper spray projectiles, pepper spray launchers, and riot expansion kits. Now, although the weapons are being purchased by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the document makes it clear that they will be used to train Federal Protective Service agents. And according to a video demonstration, the TAC-700 pepper spray launcher has a strong psychological influence on the people it's being used against because it's so loud and sounds like an automatic machine gun. Obviously has a lot of unique benefits in that you can control the rate of fire. You have different types of rate of fire, including a three-round burst option with this system. So it's a good option for agencies that are looking for higher firepower, situations where they anticipate delivering a lot of projectiles, or situations where they want to have that extra psychological advantage when they deploy this in the field. As you can imagine, just hearing that discharge is a strong psychological influence on the people that it's being used against. Well, luckily, those pepper spray guns weren't being used yesterday. Protesters in California were demonstrating against the killing of a 13-year-old boy last week by a sheriff deputy. He shot the boy seven times in 10 seconds for carrying a plastic rifle while he was walking down the street. But instead of pointing the blame at that trigger-happy sheriff's deputy, gun grabbers are blaming toy guns. An attorney with the gun control group said police have a hard enough job without also having to be able to quickly determine whether a gun is real or not real. Now, California already requires fake guns to be painted in bright colors, but now State Senator Kevin DeLeon wants to extend that to BB and pellet guns as well. Now, never mind the fact that the deputy who shot 13-year-old Lopez seven times was a firearms instructor and range master who trained his law enforcement colleagues in the proper use of force for nearly two decades, and he should have been able to tell that it wasn't a real gun. No, it's not his fault at all. It's the fact that toy guns aren't made in hot pink Nerf foam. And they're not just coming after your toy guns, but ammunition as well. Gun control more and more is turning into a war on ammunition, leaving no doubt that this is about total disarmament. Gun control groups are pushing for background and registration of ammunition and not just guns. Another new front in the war on ammunition is environmental regulation. California just banned lead bullets for hunting, citing environmental protection. The Center for Biological Diversity has lobbied the EPA unsuccessfully so far to regulate ammunition as part of the Toxic Substances Control Act. But now the only ore to lead producer in America, the largest in the Western world, has been shut down by EPA regulation. For over 20 years, the company had been researching a wet chemical process and investing $30 million to replace smelting. The new process would have eliminated 99% of all current land, air, and water pollution releases, but EPA's regulatory uncertainty and estimated expense of $100 million to convert caused the company to finally throw in the towel. It's not just ammunition that's disappearing. American industry, American jobs are being regulated out of existence as well. Now, lead's still going to be manufactured in China, but it'll be done without any environmental oversight. It'll be scarce, it'll be expensive, we'll have fragile supply lines. There's more to the shutdown of Doe Run than just shutting down American industry and exporting jobs. It's part of a multi-pronged attack on ammunition, drying up the market by hoarding all ammunition, shutting down the market with background checks, registration, and banning of online sales using environmental regulation to ban the use and manufacture of lead. And after we can no longer manufacture ammunition domestically, we have the UN Arms Trade Treaty to stop the importation of ammunition. But if you look at the multiple ways they're trying to remove all ammunition, not just certain guns they believe are dangerous, there's no question that this is about all-out gun control. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Now stay with us after the show because we're going to be premiering the second season of Conrad the Constitution. And then Jakari Jackson will sit down with Sheriff Mack to give us an update on the sheriff who is facing jail time to defend your Second Amendment right.